Hello friends, it's me, and today, Barbie! Let's check out Film Theory! We found Barbie Land from the Film Theory. Together, let's go! Wanna visit Barbie Land? Cause I figured out where it is. No rollerblading required! Though, fair warning, you might wanna bring your passport. Huh. Interesting. Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! The sh Hello Internet! Welcome to Film Theory! Hi! Show that accepts that in a world full of Barbies and Kens, sometimes it's best to just be an Allen. Man, the internet was hyped for the Barbie movie, weren't they? I swear, you couldn't scroll for more than two seconds on Twitter. Uh, X. Threads? I don't know. Y you couldn't scroll for more than two seconds on insert generic social media feed here without being bombarded by someone unleashing their inner Kennergy or rocking their newest hot pink outfit. So of course, I had to see if all the hype was warranted. And as I walked out of the theater, I realized, yeah, I kind of loved it. Sure, the theme was a bit on the nose for my taste, but man, the movie was just fun across the board. An awesome cast of characters that are just dropped into the middle of one of the coolest and most interesting fictional worlds that I've seen in a long time. A world yes. that is a fun fictional world. I and many others would probably want to visit if only it were real. Except it is real. Now, right off the bat, I might have lost you on that one. Barbie Land is clearly meant to be a fictional location, right? They even explicitly distinguish between the real world in the movie and Barbie Land. So aren't they clearly trying to tell us that Barbie Land is a fake world? Well, yeah, it's a fantasy world. That's what I thought initially too, but everything else that we see in the film gives more evidence to the contrary. When Margot Robbie's Barbie meets with Kate McKinnon's Weird Barbie to discuss the odd things that have been happening in the world, Weird Barbie describes the passageway between the real world and Barbie land as a portal. Considering the fact that portals don't, you know, tend to exist here on Earth, that would seem to tell us that Barbie land is in some separate dimension- Or oh, if it exists, um, isekai. Mm from the real world. However, this is immediately contradicted a few moments later when Weird Barbie admits that the portal was just a metaphor. She then whips out her trusty instruction manual, courtesy of Mattel, to tell Barbie the step-by-step -step directions for how to get from Barbie land to the real world, specifically Los Angeles. <laughs> I've been to Los Angeles, I wouldn't exactly call it the real world, but then again, who am I to judge? To get from Barbie land to LA, the instructions tell us that Barbie needs to take a sports car, a speedboat, a rocket ship, a tandem bicycle, a camper van, a snowmobile, and then finally don a pair of roller skates to blade all the way to Santa Monica Beach. Now, the wait, why is a rocket involved? Why is a rocket involved? Why? These aren't so much Google map directions as they are just a list of modes of transportation. That'd be like me telling you how to get to my house by saying you have to take a plane, a bus, and a car. You're missing a few key details there. We can also- Yeah, technically speaking, a rocket rule out that these comically pink propulsion devices are meant to be magical. Both Kens and Barbies, as well as real humans, are able to travel freely back and forth between Barbie land and the real world, provided they follow these instructions either forward or backward. So while the idea of trying to find the real world Barbie land might seem dumb at first, it is possible according to the canon of the movie. And that- Wait, okay, so quick question. How do you purchase a rocket? Expensive. Very expensive. Rocket. That's the kind of fine line that we love to ride on this channel. So instead of finishing my Barbenheimer double feature, I bid my family adieu and rushed home, unfurled the world map and tried to pinpoint exactly where Mattel is hiding Barbie land. And let me tell you, despite the movie seemingly going out of its way to dissuade theorists like us from doing exactly that, they gave us just the perfect amount of breadcrumbs that led us right to the doorstep of that pink paradise. Oh, I figured you out, Mattel. You're gonna have to try a lot harder than that to keep your boy Matt Pat from going to live out his dream of being a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. So grab your pink stilettos, Birkenstocks, and Google Maps, dear theorists, as I once and for all chart a course to Barbie Land. Let's start by throwing out some possible locations that Barbie Land can't be. In the movie, one of the characters asks if Barbie Land is in an alternate reality, basically asking the movie the exact question that I desperately needed. The CEO of Mattel, played by Will Ferrell, says that you can think of it as a small town in Sweden. Now, it's clear that in this moment he's trying to change the subject. After all, his main aim in the movie is to make sure that Barbie Land and the real world stay as isolated as possible. That said, could Barbie Land actually be in Sweden? No. Several times throughout the movie, we see characters taking a sports car just outside of Barbie Land, only to find themselves in a desert. Sweden is many things. A desert, it is not. This information also allows us to rule out my sneaky early pick for Barbie Land, which was Wisconsin. As it turns out, Barbie, the toy's canonical hometown, is the fictional city of Willows, Wisconsin. Since this movie did such a good job of making deep-cut references to past Barbie lore, it would have been fitting to see Barbie Land's real location pan homage 
homage to her lesser known home. But alas, Wisconsin is the antithesis of a desert, so our search must continue. Now, as much fun as it be to rule out every single location on Earth one by one, there has to be a more straightforward approach to solving the mystery. Eventually, I realized that instead of just trying to eliminate where Barbie Land couldn't be, we had to follow the route laid out by the movie. We needed to use each mode of transportation and then cross-reference locations on the map to see if we could create a travel itinerary that would actually find Barbie's Malibu dream house. And uh, not to bury the lead here, but uh, it's not as easy as just being in Malibu. Since we obviously don't know our starting location, the only thing we can really do is go through our pre-established journey in reverse. Starting in Los Angeles and then working backwards through the modes of transportation until we eventually stumble our way back into Barbie land. The first leg we need to look into is crossing into California while wearing neon and roller skates. The way it's phrased in the movie is a little bit odd. It goes like this, quote, The snowmobile will take you most of the way to the state of Los Angeles, where you will don neon and rollerblades and enter the country of California. Now, clearly, there are some mistakes there. A recurring joke throughout the movie is that the Barbies are overall ignorant to real-world things, so weird Barbie getting confused about the difference between states and countries is no big surprise. It's also worth noting that while weird Barbie is saying this, she's clearly pointing to the Los Angeles area on the map. So you could argue that she doesn't really mean crossing into the border of the state of California at all. Regardless, I tried to solve this one in two different ways. The first was taking what she- Fun fact, I was reading through all the theories about Barbie and that a lot of people is like, the geography is... What? <laughs> said literally, and looking at the closest places where Barbie could cross into the state of California after having just got off of a snowmobile. The three states that immediately surround California are Oregon, Nevada, and Arizona. Taking an aerial view of those three potential entry points, one of these things is clearly not like the others. While Arizona and Nevada are clearly scorching deserts, Oregon is a much better fit for our snowmobile stop. It has plenty of snow-capped mountains and a thriving snowmobile industry. It also, conveniently enough, had not just one, but two snowmobile rental spots just across the Oregon-California border in the town of Medford. What so we drop this? off our snowmobiles in Medford, lace up our roller skates, and head on down the California coastline until we get to sunny Los Angeles, is what I'd be saying if it wasn't such a long trip. See, if we're crossing the border all the way up at the north, we are now forced to skate the entire length of California, and that is a long trip. That is taking 11 plus days to get down to Los Angeles. I mean, Barbie's not one to skip leg day, and if we want to take weird Barbie at her word, it's our most probable bet but is it our best bet? So I took another look. If we wanted somewhere that was a bit closer, Lake Tahoe area tucked right here away in the Sierra Nevada mountains is a slightly closer possibility for this penultimate leg of the journey, but not by a whole lot. You see, starting from here, Ken and Barbie are spending about six days in roller skates trying to get down to Hollywood. Better, but still in the realm of ridiculous. I don't know. To me, both of these routes just felt too far-fetched, which made me think that weird Barbie was just off in her map reading skills. I mean, the maps in the movie leave a lot to be desired in terms of accuracy. Like here, we see that New York is practically up in Canada, and England is down near the equator, making London a tropical paradise rather than the cool, foggy town it normally is. And again, yep, as for mentions, the geography is a bit... In her directions, Weird Barbie already flip-flopped state and country, so I decided to tackle this a second way. Maybe what she was meaning to say is that after snowmobiling, you cross into the county of Los Angeles in the state of California, which then gives us a lot more realistic possibilities. Specifically here, the San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains, literally an hour's drive outside of Los Angeles. Here, we have ourselves beautiful snow-capped mountains, perfect for snowmobiling, and better yet, perfect for rollerblading into the city at a mere 12 to 14 hours journey. It's certainly long, but it is far more attainable than the multi-day or even multi-week trips of our other options. So I'm going to move forward using that as my waypoint. What's next on the journey? Prior to heading to California, Ken and Barbie take a tandem bike followed by a camper van. Well, that sounds like a backpacker's dream or back to the same situation we were in with the rollerblades. You can basically take a bike and a van just about anywhere you want to, leading to infinite possibilities. Luckily, we get ourselves some visual detail that actually paint for us a much clearer path. In the movie, we get a montage of of Barbie and Ken riding as they go through each leg of their adventure. In the tandem bike section, we see them riding through a field of tulips and windmills. Now, when I see tulips and windmills, the first place my mind goes to is the Netherlands or Denmark. But if I thought rollerblading down an entire state seemed ridiculous, biking across the Atlantic, yeah, I tend to make some dumb theories, but that one is just a bridge too far. Then I realized, well, sure, it looks Dutch or Danish. That could just be an aesthetic choice. There must be places that are much closer that look like it came straight out of a postcard from Europe. And sure enough, there are 
are. Doing a quick Google search, you see that Holland, Michigan is riffing off its namesake, tulips and windmills for days. But still, that's all the way across the country. There has to be something a bit more realistic, something a bit closer to the destinations that we've already mapped out. And indeed there is. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Solvang, California, a small town located just outside of Los Angeles that's decked out to look exactly like a Danish town, complete with the tulips and windmills and apple skeever. Solvang looks exactly like the tandem bike ride that we see in the movie, and it's a mere 13 hour bike ride just outside the city limits. Hmm, looks like we're starting to see a pattern here. Fun side note- Just like in the map I just mentioned, a mere 13 hours bike ride. Hmm, that's a pretty long bike ride. <laughs> By the way, Solvang is where our head of production, Jason, actually got engaged. Good to know that Jason's marriage is unironically helping me to solve an insane theory about the geography of the Barbie universe years later. Hashtag blame Woo! Jason. More like hashtag thanks, Jason. Also, on your way there, you. make sure you check Thank out you the so pea much. soup at the nearby restaurants. That seems random, and it definitely is, but it's just what the highway restaurants advertise over in that area, and it's pretty good. Anyway, after a gentle tandem bike ride through our discount Copenhagen, our plastic pals can rent a camper van and make their way to the San Gabriel Mountains, where they'll then snowmobile around Mount Baldy before rollerblading down to Hollywood. So far, so good, and all nicely contained within this nice little pocket of Southern California. Which brings us to the absolute dumbest leg of the trip, the rocket ship. In the montage of Barbie and Ken's journey, we see that they ride a literal rocket into space. At first, this made me think that Barbie Land was an interplanetary destination, but yes, now I'm yes, not quite yes. so sure. Well, having Barbie be canonically an alien would be hilarious, and very on brand for where we are in 2023. The step before this is riding a speedboat, and you wouldn't exactly be able to find any place to rent a speedboat over on Mars, so I think we're still dealing with Earth here. In fact, in that same scene, we also see a brief glimpse of the Earth and a suspicious looking pink shape that kind of looks like the outline of Barbie Land. If that's- Which kind of, you know, the whole rocket thing, spaceship thing, you know, their spacesuits, they don't have a helmet. How do they breathe? Like, how? How, how? Through, then that means that the rocket ship is a bit of a fun detour for Barbie and Ken, allowing them to launch from and then return back to the same spot. That being said, we still need to find the place that this would happen, preferably in tandem biking distance from Solvang, California. So where could you possibly find a rocket ship? Oh, will you look at that? Located just 26 miles outside of Solvang is none other than the Vandenberg Space Force Base, which no. features rocket launch pads that are being used by both NASA and SpaceX. What are the odds that a spaceport, of all things, would be so close to our knockoff Denmark? It's almost like the writers planned it this way. The launch pads also happen to be just a stone's throw away from dozens of bike shops that allow for a tandem getaway to the quote, Danish capital of America. No, I'm not making any of this up. This is how cleanly all of this stuff maps onto itself. The Space Force Base also butts up against the Pacific Ocean, the perfect landing spot for a speedboat. Putting it all together, it's hard to deny it feels like we're on the right track. We've made it almost the entire way back to Barbie land. We are so close I could practically smell the plastic. So from Vandenberg, we need to find a boat route that grants us access to a desert that can then be crossed via the Barbie sports car. Then and only then will we finally be able to locate the mythical city decked out in pink. Ladies and gentlemen, toys and girls, I think I found the route. Barbie land is located in none other than, drum roll please. <laughs> I just like it, the drum roll is on the sandals, the shoes. It's the drumsticks. Monterey, Mexico. Yep, uh, Barbie and the gang are living La Vida Rosa down in Mexico. Monterey, located in the northeastern state of Nuevo Leon, is a beautiful city flanked on its western side by what, dear theorist? The massive Chihuahuan Desert. By crossing the desert by car, you'd reach the Gulf of California in about eight to 10 hours. From there, you can board a speedboat and ride your way all the way up the coast to Vandenberg Space Force Base. Then catch a quick ride on one of Elon Musk's rockets, go into low earth orbit and back before renting a tandem bike to ride all the way to Solvang, catching a view of the tulips. After that, rent a camper van and ride up to the San Gabriel Mountains where you'll ditch your van for some cool snowmobiles. Ride around until lacing up some rollerblades and taking the scenic route through California to finally reach the quote unquote real world of Los Angeles. Now, why would I choose Monterey specifically? Admittedly, when you look at the complete map of the journey, there are definitely some places that are closer to Southern California that can still fit the bill of deserts built up against an ocean. But consider this, what else is located in Monterey, Mexico, but none other yes. than the world world's largest Mattel factory, with over 200,000 square meters of space and over 3,500 employees. Monterey is the perfect home for Barbie in the movie because it quite literally is the home for Barbie in the real world. Literally Barbie land, the land that makes all the Barbies and houses all the Kens and Allens and Skippers of the world. But as one- Oh, it was- the, pl the place in real life is actually a Barbie land in real life. It actually exists? 
Did he? final point of evidence to seal the deal. In the movie when Ken starts to go hyper-masculine in his Kennergy, we do see some Kens actively building a border wall outside of Barbie land. Now, I recognize that right there is a political landmine, but don't blame the messenger. I'm not the one who's doing it. I'm just saying it's in the movie. And the subtext is obvious. An army of Ken dolls building a border wall? Yeah, it's just further evidence to prove that Barbie land is at or near the US-Mexico border, exactly where Monterey and its Mattel factory is. Where then is Barbie land? It's not as crazy of a question as you might think. It's a rollerblade, bike ride, snowmobile, speedboat away from Los Angeles. Or, you know, a three-hour flight from LAX. Even though the movie gives us all these convoluted directions that seem so lol random, what they really laid out for us was a series of breadcrumbs, giving us all the information we needed to track Barbie back to the source. The literal source. Her factory in Mexico. Sadly, when you look at pictures of the place, though, it's not coated in neon pink. Maybe one day we can at least dream. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And and cut. Hey, if you could do me a favor and focus all your energy on that subscribe button, that would be awesome. Or maybe you're in the mood for another subscribe. video about Barbie. Subscribe. If that's the case, check out our most recent style theory, again, on the Barbie movie. That one's on screen right now. Oh, well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you find this video quite interesting to watch. I love new unique twists and turns on this literal twists and turns geography map. You know, get the point. Um, thank you so much, and I hope you find this video quite interesting to watch. But hey, that's just a theory, a film theory, and card. Thank you. Yay! And I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, follow. You get the point. Thank you so much. Subscribe. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.